are we still multiplying? Do we have any common bases that are being multiplied? We do. We have, we have several x's being multiplied. Firstly, understand that when we have multiplication, it, this really means four times and, and two times and, and five times, right? That's what it really means. So you could reorder those, which means the same situation is going to occur here that happened here. Essentially, we're just going to have to multiply our numbers together and then multiply our x's together. Look what we could do. Watch on the board here real quick. You could reorganize this. That's all multiplication. You could make this 2 times 4 times 5. You could group your numbers. And then you would have x cubed times x times x to the 7th. Can you get from here to here? Are you guys all right with that? Yeah, OK. So that means you can multiply your numbers together. We can do that right now. What's your numbers going to be when you multiply those together? 40. 40. Sure. 40. Why? Because you're going to do the 2 times 4 times 5. Remember, this is just a, a different way to write it. You can show this to me or not. I honestly don't care if you show me this step. If it helps you, then do it. What I need you to know is that it's just possible. The reason why this works is because this is possible. Are you guys focused today? Are you, are you getting that? Yeah. Okay. Now let's do the x's. We know that if we reorganize them, we'll have x cubed times x times x to the 7th. Well, you can do it from right here, too x cubed times x times x to the seventh. I know I'm going to get x, but what power am I going to get? 11. Wait a minute, what? 11, why not 10? Because you have an x by itself. So. so what we need to realize is that, well, this is x to the third, and this is x to the seventh. So you are going to add those together, right? Because you're, you're multiplying, that's this rule. It says whenever you're multiplying, you're, you're adding up, you're adding up those exponents. But there also should be an exponent there. What is that exponent when I have x? One. So there's a little 1 there. It's a hidden 1. We don't write it. But if you give me x to the 10th, you're going to be way off. It's not x to the 10th. It's actually x to the, well, it's, it's 11. Because you do 3 plus 1 plus 7, that's going to give you x to the 11th. Would you raise your hand if you're okay on x to the 11th, not x to the 10th? Good deal. That quick? Yep. Wow. You guys are pretty. You guys are getting this then, right? That's 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 kind of nice. These can work out really quick when you get down the, the principles here. So the idea is we're going to multiply all the numbers together first. Then we'll take care of any of the common bases that we have. So here, what'd you get for your your coefficient for your number? Thirty-three. Perfect. And when we look at our y's, we've got y to the fifth. Yes. We got y to the third. Yeah. And we got y to the well, there's, there's like an invisible one there. So when we're adding those, co those, those exponents together, we're going to get the 5 plus the 3 plus the 1. You should get y to the ninth power. Show of hands how many people got y to the ninth. That's awesome. Very good job. Do you feel okay on that particular property that when you multiply those common bases, you add the exponents? There are a couple more that we've got to talk about. The next one we're going to talk about is called the power property. power property. Here's what the power property says. It says suppose instead of just multiplying a base times a, a common base times a common base, such as like y to the fifth times y to the third, what if you had some exponent and then you raised it to another power, hence the word power property. Like x squared to the third. Well, we're going to find out what this actually means and why. Some of you have probably seen this before. Maybe you even know what, what to do here. We're going to see why, why it is the way it is. If you really think about x squared to the third power, what it means is x squared times x squared times x squared. True? It means x squared that many times in a row being multiplied. So x squared times x squared times x squared. Well, now here's the deal. Doesn't this look a whole lot like what we just did right here? If we have, yeah, I've got three because remember this when you have like x cubed, this is x times x times x, right? It says whatever you have here, it's being multiplied times itself. Well, now I have x squared to the third power. Well, what that means is whatever's in the parentheses is getting multiplied by itself three times. That's where it's coming from. So 
x squared, but I have it one, two, I've got it three times there. Just like this was three times with that x. Are you guys okay with that? You sure? All right. But now this looks a whole lot like what we did here. What did you do when you had this times this times this? Did you, what did you do with those exponents? Yeah. You added them up. So we're going to add 2 plus 2. Plus. How much are we going to get there? Six. It's repeated addition. Repeatedly adding that exponent. If you remember back to the very first day of class, repeated addition is defined as multiplication. So how can you get from here directly to here without doing this work? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. You guys are right. Definitely right. So if we, if we look at this, this means you're going to repeatedly add 2 three times. Look at that. 2 three times. That's 3 times 2. That means you're going to multiply those exponents. That gives us the power property. So power property says in general right here, it says if you have x to some power and you raise it to another power, you're going to take that same base to the n times n power. So it says in order to simplify those parentheses, you multiply those exponents. Now I gotta tell you, it might seem kind of a piece of cake to you right now, but let me, let me warn you, if you're really not paying attention, these can sneak up on you and confuse you. They really, really can. Some people when, they're, when they get on in the heat of a test and they're doing all this work, they're gonna start multiplying these numbers and give me 15 here. Can you see what I'm talking about? They're going to add those numbers, or they're going to multiply both. You really need to be solid on what these properties say. If we have the multiplication, yes, we're, we're definitely adding. The only time you multiply exponents is if you have an exponent raised to an exponent. You guys see the difference in those two things? You've got to be kind of good at that. You've got to be really good at that. Would you like to see some examples on it? Sure. Okay, and then we're going to put everything together and see if we can do some kind of complex problems uh, to really hammer this home. So this is the second property, the power property. How about that one? x to the eighth to the third power. So what it really means is x to the eighth times x to the eighth times x to the eighth. So you're repeatedly adding that eight. That's where we get that multiplication from. So x to the eighth and then raised to the third power, you're not going to add those. You're going to multiply those. You're saying, I have 8, but I have it 3 times now. 3 times 8. How much are you going to get? X to the 24th. X stays the same. You're going to get to the 24th power. Exactly. That. Exactly right. So it fits into our, our power property. We have an exponent raised to an exponent. It says we multiply those things. Try one on your own, and then I'll, I'll start combining these. Why to the third, then to the sixth? Yeah. What'd you get? Why to the ninth or why to the eighteenth? Is there a big difference between those? Yeah, yeah, huge difference. Remember, you're dealing with exponents. 2 to the 9th and 2 to the 18th are hugely different. Very, very much different. So y to the 9th and y to the 18th would be very different. So we've got to get these right. So we do the 6 times 3, we got y to the 18th. Now let's see if we can put this together and use a couple of these properties in conjunction with each other. Let's see if we can put this idea and this idea together. Well, that looks kind of nasty unless we can identify some of those properties, doesn't it? Like, wow, there's a lot going on there. But if we treat it like, a, like little problems within a, a bigger problem, well, we can, we, can, we can deal with it. First thing we do is, is just like any other order operations, you're going to deal with any exponents that you have first. Deal with any exponents you have first, then deal with your multiplication. So let's look up here real quick. If, if you just kind of forget about that for a second, a squared to the fourth, that's dealing with an exponent right there. We have that fourth power that's, that the a squared is being raised to. Can you tell me what a squared to the fourth is going to equal? A to the eighth power? A to the eighth. 
Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Eight to the eight. Perfect. Perfect. So we have eight to the eight. Then we have this times. We're going to deal with that in just a little bit. But first, we got to get rid of those parentheses around this one. A cubed to the ninth. A cubed to the ninth power. Are you going to get a to the twelfth or a to the twenty seventh? So your first goal is to get rid of those parentheses. You might have to use a power property to do it. We take a to an, or a power to a power. We're multiplying that. Hey, now can we do this? Are you going to multiply eight times twenty seven or add eight times twenty seven? So that's where you need to jump over between one property to the next one. That's going to be eight plus twenty seven. You're going to get how much? Thirty five. Uh, that's it. Is it reasonable? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird? Yes. Maybe. It might be brand new for you. You might be learning something brand new here, but this is going to be very useful when you get into A and C. <coughs> okay, Z to the fourth, then to the fifth power, times Z to the third, then to the seventh power. You can give me this step, what I, what I did here. This and then that. So it should be a two step process for you. see how we did it. Well, we should know, I'll model how you think about this. First thing we should know is we're still doing with order operations. We're looking for any exponents that we have. We've got exponents being raised to exponents, and right there in my mind I go, okay, if I have exponents raised to exponents, I know that's repeated addition. That means multiplication. So I should be multiplying those exponents. So that means instead of z to the fourth to the fifth, I could write z to the fifth 